don't worry. You, 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 tell, you tell us any project you want us to edit, we take it out. That's perfect. No, I don't want to confirm. <laughs> okay. You're not you, going to censor know. it though. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. you're telling <laughs> you, You've been the first one to suffer that, that kind of treatment. So I know you wouldn't. Um, we're here uh, for your um, art exhibit here at this uh, gallery in Madrid. And I sort of wanted to begin by asking you a little bit about your education and your formation. Um, I take it that you understood that you studied architecture in, yes, in, in my Thailand? hometown. In your hometown. Yes. What did you pick that? It's kind of a distant area from filmmaking, um, or like more, more or less distant, and technically you said to me quite distant. What did you pick up that, uh, that career, and what draw you into architecture? So talk us through that. I think I study. Years. I think I study architecture because I like film, and mm -hmm. I, I found that it's very close. But in my hometown at that time, uh, there's no film school. Right. And I was really anti-Bangkok. So mm -hmm. Bangkok, they have film school. But so I study architecture, and it was really, I think, helpful. Because while I was studying, I was thinking about cinema, the way of the space and light. Even in my thesis of architecture, I designed a film studio. Wow. So, <laughs> we so you from already from the beginning, you were interested in cinema, but you were approaching it from the perspective yeah. of architecture. I was obsessed. And so I tried to put things in terms of to link with cinema. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know what I want to do in movies, so and then I study uh, visual art. Yeah, tell us a little bit about it. Um, you studied, how long was it in Chicago? In yes. the Chicago Arts Institute? Yes. You did a master's in visual arts, right? Right, in, in fine art, but focus on moving image. Right. And in that school, we was uh, focusing on the so-called experimental cinema. Right. So I have a chance to be exposed to a lot of Mostly American, you know, classic Underground. like Stan Brackish, right. Andy Warhol, Maya Darin, and, right. and all these uh, had a big impact on your early practice, on, on my practice. Mm -hmm. And uh, sort of like, if you were to summarize in what kind of way, because I, I take it that in, in, in that, in the art school in Chicago, you sort of were exposed to all kinds of art, artistic practices, like from like performance, painting, and so forth. Yes, like that kind photography. Of photography. Like all that melting pot of different artistic practice, how did that come to influence your work when you went back to uh, Thailand and began to produce um, your films? Well, in Chicago, I started to see the some kind of flow of all this, what you mentioned about different kind of expression. Mm -hmm. So I tried different things, a painting or photography, and, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, the, to, to understand art history mm -hmm. and the relation of my standpoint in it, yep. a person from Thailand. And then I started to see the value of, of Thailand and of, of my own memory. Right. So when I went back to Thailand, it was all of this discovery of ideas right. and how, how to express. Mm. And it's almost like, like you, I found some the food that I've been looking for. While you were away. Sort of yes. Right. But I had to adapt uh, somewhat because in Thailand there's no culture of this experimental film. Mm -hmm. And I was really used to 16 millimeter right. format and there's no lab that can print that. So, so I work on 35 millimeter and, uh, and I, I just work in this kind of system, you know, with the industry of feature film, and, right. and along the way, I make this short, continue making short. And that time, video camera had become affordable, right. and so I start to make video. And then my friend uh, started to put some of them in the gallery, in right. the museum. So in the beginning, I was no, that's not art, that's cinema, <laughs> you know, my works. And, and she said, oh, shut up. So right. I, I start to, yeah. Mm. That's, that's very interesting because one of the things I want to ask you, so if you, like you were saying just now, your work is kind of blurred and works between galleries and cinema very often. Like you do certain sorts of films that may end up in a gallery and then all, all the kinds of films that end up in a, in a cinema. And I, I take, for instance, films like Uncle Bomb, they were part of a larger project, Primitive, that um, sort of was truly an art project in, its yeah. in, in a sense. And Uncle Bomb came to be a, like the last uh, piece mm. of work in that, in that general, um, 
collection of artworks, and I was kind of wondering, wondering what's the, um, what's kind of the input, and what kind of different approach you have uh, towards cinema when you're doing these kinds of short films that um, have toured different galleries that, across the world, and when you do feature films, seeing that so often you move between one and the other so comfortably. What's sort of like the different filmmaking approach that you have for these two spaces, which is the gallery and the cinema? I think it's all about limitations and working with them because in cinema there's quite a limitation of uh, there are many rules of let's say the length of cinema and the way the audience approach your movie in the dark in sitting you know and in the art you can have less rule or more liberation so so this kind of balance that mm. I like to move in between or back and forth or, or, or break them, I don't know. So, Do you, mm, do you think you, the, 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 the art form in, in the gallery or the um, art video, the video art, the video art as a, as a general artistic practice, do you think you find more freedom there than you find in your films? Yes, yes, yes? of course. Yes. Of course, there's a freedom of format, there's yeah. length, and, and the audience are more active, right. you know, so you give a mo more room for the audience. Right. But at the same time, after a while, you need some rules, you know. I, I feel bored right. with this art and right. Right. bored with freedom. So you need some kind of rule and challenge of to play with this within this rule of cinema. Right. So then I try to work on cinema. So it's about this back and forth, back and forth, and 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 feel uh, how do you maybe bridge them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, and it's all personal. Uh, so it's, it's it's about this private. Uh, Exploration. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, it's interesting you commented the private element because you've, you've said this in a few interviews. Um, mm -hmm. At the same time, there's something very interesting in, in several of the uh, um, art vi video art gallery practice that you've made. You've made this sort of sim similar to uh, Monsieur's Object Ami. You've made this, for instance, I, I gather in Japan in a gallery you did an exhibition in which you sort of went collecting stories of people mm -hmm. and you sort of put them together. And um, I was wondering whether you see um, a more uh, authorial voice, a more private, a more biographical um, uh, domain or terrain in the world of feature film, where you have more space to do narratives that might relate to your family, to my relate to your region, yeah. or in the or in the art gallery uh, uh, scene. I'm, t mm. I'm, I'm asking this because I know that very often in your in your films, in particular, you bring like very specific biographical elements of yours, like the name of the doctor, the DC, space, the space, yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that, that stuff. Do you see any, any difference on that one? Or? No, everything is personal. <laughs> personal? Mm. Yes. Yeah. I I don't know, like the show here, with my dogs and my cats. So right. It's, 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 just, it's just different uh, process, right. you know, and, and you play with it and you try to, to express uh, the, the best that how you feel at that moment, mm. you know. So, so in a sense, cinema is more about memory, about something that you carefully thought out and try to reflect this past. But for me, the video works are somehow more immediate and right. of some of the works here, you know, it's about discussion with the team members. Right. We went to places and we spent a week talking about politics. And in the end, in the work, it's only about writing. So this kind right. of process is, is part mm. of it. Yeah. That's very interesting because it, sort of what it gives it of the impression that your um, gallery output is sort of like an ongoing diary, as it were. Whereas your films yeah, is more like a it. more composed memoir, as it were, like a more composed collective story like, um, and more structured. I wanted to ask you a little bit more about the uh, narrative structure of your films. Perhaps, um, I guess, I reckon in the West, possibly you are uh, particularly well known by the kind of dislocated, fragmented narratives that you do, particularly tropical malady, the, 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 like that stop in the middle, the credits, in, so the, um, also the, the, the fracture in, on, on the sort of two different narratives that you have in Syndrome in the Century. And um, sort of I was wondering, um, it's kind of like, I guess probably West, Western audiences and Western critics that I, that I know have particularly approached you in terms of like an avant-garde artist who has sort of broken the narrative and mm -hmm. the notation of the narrative. But at the same time, like, like we, uh, what we're saying here, you come from a background which is purely visual, mm. and particularly interested in visual and then biographical matter. Where, where does this interest in fragmented, 
broken narratives and this sort of like narratives that follow our characters and break and follow other sets of characters. Where does this come from, you think? Well, I, I, I really try to, I try to pinpoint where it started, but for me, it's nothing new. It's been explored in different, different art forms, and um, maybe because there's so much contrast growing up, and I think it was a time when I study when. Uh, during I was in Chicago, there's the coming of internet and also the change of analog to digital. Mm. And my hometown has been changing a lot. So this contrast, you know. Right, is the one that can create that fracture. Yeah, also mm. a small town and the city right. of Bangkok right. that I moved to later is, is all these things uh, that build into this duality. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's very interesting because actually one of the things that I think in your reception in the West was kind of slanted is that a lot of people stress um, very much the um, supernatural aspect of your films. Mm -hmm. And for instance, in Tropical Malady, they focused a lot on the, on the, ho the whole section with the tiger. And they also kind of forgot the other one, which is set in a model city mm -hmm. and it's set monotrope. So I get where you're coming from when you say that it's sort of a class of modernity, contemporaneity mm -hmm. against uh, sort of different traditional, supernatural world. Mm -hmm. And um, in that along those lines, I wanted to ask you a bit of a, about the sensibility, the, uh, sen the supernatural sensibility of your films, which is something that appears here and there. And um, so if I wanted to ask you maybe a, a, like an impertinent question, but um, I mean, you, you were educated in Chicago and I'm sure you've, be, you've been exposed to this question over and over again, I reckon, which is, uh, mm. I reckon for uh, many Eastern di uh, directors, they have the problem that the films is very, easily pinpointed as oriental, as having this kind of orientalized idea of the East mm -hmm. that they present the kind of, uh, that, they, that they, they kind of look at films in the East and they look towards a very specific idea which was created by imperial and colonial narratives, which is this idea of the magical East, mm -hmm. the East fi filled with spirits and, uh, and as well the, the, the East that is particularly populated by ghosts in the jungle, which has been a theme that's been very important to you. So in your films, knowing very well that this is a problem and this is going to be a kind of, this been a kind of stereotype that the West has imposed in the East, how do you manage to sort of, while presenting the supernatural and presenting the magical, how do you sort of try to clash that mm -hmm. um, perception or that kind of misconception or stereotypical uh, vision of the East that uh, the West and you know the Imperial West has had for like 200 years? How do you kind of battle that? But it's, uh, I think it's about reality. It's right. I. I was thinking that it's really magical place, right. you know, it's oriental idea, but it's it's real. When I was younger, there was there were ghosts, mm. and there were, you know, creatures in the jungle. So so it was there, you know. But then when I grew up, it changed, you know, this kind of shifting of of reality, and that's what I'm interested in. Right. And when you live there, you really feel the presence of spirit and the presence of belief and s spirituality. Right. Yes. And and it's maybe like religion right. in the West. Yep. You know, so but there is more animistic. Yeah. yeah. So so I just follow my instinct yeah. and, and and more and more look at it like why I made this film and I think it's more to do with psychological uh, rather than spiritual. Mm. You know, and it's more, more and more scientific. You know, when I look at tropical malady, for example, mm. it become uh, simply m like the cataloging of memory and and how one hallucinates. And movies like Uncle Bunny. Right. For me, the ghost is not a ghost; it's memory. Right. Yeah. But when I grew up, yes, they are ghosts. But now it, they're not. They become a uh, kind of haunting uh, attachment. Mm. But then the movie also talking about the representation of ghosts, right. representation of uh, how you say trauma. Right. Yeah. So so Uncle Bunmi has all this mixture. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So so at one point I think I have to not care about, about the reception, the reception or mm. exorcist system or whatever. Right. It's, it's 
things may be useless. Great. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to ask you a little bit more about the reception in the East, now that you bring up Anchor Bomb. I'm going to have to ask you sort of about like the overwhelming reception that you had in the in the West. Um, mm -hmm. And um, like, I think um, it's it's very hard to pin down and to understand what kind of the what's the logic of Western film festivals. There's mm. there's countless of great great directors that we probably don't know mm. or probably don't we don't care about coming from Africa, South America, the East. And um, it's kind of very very odd the kind of logic that uh, it's hard to understand the kind of logic that film festivals follow when they uh, kind of pick up one specific artist from one country and they boom and they up uplift it and they lift it and, and he becomes this sort of massive uh, uh, indie art house star all over the world. Um, what what story do you think that you that particularly Uncle Bomb? Mm. And um, I mean the reason I'm asking is Uncle Bomb was uh, if I'm if I'm if I'm not wrong it was uh, sort of uh, awarded. The Pandor by uh, Tim Burton, mm. that's right. Which is sort of like a Star Wars of a kind of commercial cinema in the West. Mm. And um, so I we just wanted to ask you, probably reflecting this in the meantime, what was it about that film that sparked so much interest in the West? And what do you think it was? It's been you among many other different, I guess, Thailand directors and directors from mm. all over the East that has been sort of championed as one of the greatest of our time. I just don't know because it's. Uh, even when I had the film there, it was so quick in the festival, and I didn't know my movie actually all the time. It's, it's really organic and kind of instinctive way of making mm -hmm. film each time. So when it recently finished, when it got the prize in Cannes, I was a bit shocked. Sure, because yeah. Of course, with, with happiness, but at the same time, I didn't know what's in it. But over the years, uh, I still don't know. I, I just think that maybe because of this, this organic feeling right. that you are not so bound by, by the conventional structure. Sure. Uh, but I believe we all have different mm. rhythm in ourselves, and, mm. and that's what I'm trying to find. I'm still looking for okay. this rhythm when you grow, when you get older and older, and how it changes. And so, so I think. Maybe this point, this point of different kind of rhythm, and mm. people, maybe some people are fascinated by it. Mm. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, in like a follow up to this to this yeah. question, is um, there's been a uh, growing number of Eastern film festivals like Busan, like mm. Shanghai, many many in Japan. Um, but then the reason I, I brought up the previous question is so because when you look at the list of films that have won in Busan. Mm. Which are mostly films by the first or the second film by a by a young film director in the new current they they, they are awarded. There's only one name that I could find that I sort of had made like international splash, which is Yasan Kim. Um, mm. All the all the rest sort of they don't manage to translate or to arrive to art house audiences among the West. Do you think that it is still necessary to have the validation of Western film festivals like Venice, like mm. Locarno, like um, Cannes? in order to achieve that worldwide success that um, you sort of have achieved? I do. I you think so? I think... Uh, what do you think... What do you think that... E at least for now. For now. For better or for worse. Right. Uh, because I always view film as universal. Right. And like, like other products, you, you have a market. Uh, right. And, and the big festival is, you know, you cannot deny that where everyone... It's like a big exposure. Mm. Yeah. Mm and all the reviewers and all mm. that. So, so it's, it's really, uh, how you say, the, the platform that mm. maybe is not good feeling for filmmakers, mm. but yeah. And what do you think that festivals like Busan or like Shanghai mm. or, or any other of the ones that happen in the East, what do you think they haven't managed still mm. to sort of create, if I may use the word, hegemony in, in the world of, the, in, of cinema? Why they mm. still don't manage to, through the platforms, create filmmakers that have international validation without the need to go to Cannes, Venice? Well, or do you think there is filmmakers that are coming up from those festivals and that they don't need any recognition from the West and they're managing to acquire an international audience? Well, for sure, it's, it's still, you know, we, we're still in early stages where where you need this kind of festival right. because, because the world is not, we think it's connected, but not super connected yet, you know. 
where you need to did validation and to how you say it's it's slowly uh, democratized mm -hmm. process, but it's, it's still going on. Yeah, right. And believe it or not, in in Thailand we didn't have a film festival until the nineties. Oh. You know, so in Shanghai or in mm -hmm. other places, <coughs> it's about this how you say the exposures mm -hmm. uh, expose younger filmmaker who cannot travel to come right so, I see. so and then it's different from downloading the movie to see in the big it's like a ritual right so it's still important as yeah. a way to nurture young voices and, and it's happening I, th I think in china i heard there's so many uh, new uh, voices and, and not necessary copy but to be inspired like hey this is different rhythms you know right. different structure mm. I wanted to ask you now um, a little bit about um, the, uh, so we were talking about the reception in the West. Mm. I wanted to ask you about the reception in, in your homeland in Thailand about your the film. Mm. You've received uh, censorship treatment a few times, mm. sadly. Um, and uh, from what I gather, maybe this has changed and you can uh, like update us on, the, on this front. Your films aren't uh, widely distributed or widely seen mm. in Thailand as they are, I don't know, I guess in France or in, or in mm. England or so mm. somewhere else. Uh, why is that, and um, sort of is that changing? Uh, if your if uh, if your film mm. are your films entering more uh, Thai la Thai audiences, or how do you see that? But in fact, I I was subject to censorship only one time. One time. Yeah, with in cinema cinema censorship. censorship. Yeah, okay, I, th I thought you had seven. I think I had been censored uh, second time. But but that's quite a, a big uh, revelation for me about the system. Right. And so we have a movement to to change that yeah. to now. But yeah, it was it was slow, but but like other things in the country, it's been mm, really slow because of the dictatorship mm. style of the government. Yeah. Uh, so as a result, my film is more like digital, you know, distributed, mm, and like other places, it's it's, it's really niche. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I still think that it's. it's is quite known. They are quite known, mm -hmm. but uh, not. We, we don't have the same culture. I mean, uh, recently the government has picked I don't know hundred or fifty films okay. of uh, of this uh, last that produced in the last uh, king life, mm -hmm. and, and Uncle Bunny was one of them. So they they made it a screening, and they kind of forced student to see <laughs> <laughs> and my so you're getting into the education uh, your films are getting into the education of the students okay. yes but but then the textbook. but then uh, they didn't care they didn't educate in different way because it's such a jump you know right. we don't have uh, in other cities we don't have film festival and so there's no uh, solid uh, kind of best understanding moving image which is a universal language mm. but we're not trained in this language right so the student there uh, just just came and left and <laughs> <laughs> it was really right. kind of another kind of revelation and sadness at the same right. time right. because when you look at the country like Taiwan, you know, mm. yeah, it's yeah. a solid education, mm. cinematic support, you know, but Thailand and that region, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, mm. no, right, it's different. Right, it seemed that uh, during the years in which, I, I don't know if people still talk about it, during the years of this so-called new wave of Thai cinema, mm. it seemed like that was going to come up, that there was going to be this, that this new generation, which was made by, by you and other directors, you were sort of managed to come up with um, enough of a uh, cultural mm. capital mm. to make a, you know, a cinematic and so on. What do you, I mean, I guess you're probably going to mention the political drama or ad, and the junta, mm. but um, sort of two, two side question here, what, what did you make of your being paired with these directors of the new Thai cinema, which new wave of Thai cinema, which a lot of them came from advertisement, and um, yes. so what do you what do you make around that time when you were sort of paired with those with those directors with Wusi, with Spec um, and and all these people? And um, mm. do, 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 I mean, do you, did you look at that with displeasure? And what do you how do you think the the the, the cinema in, that in your country has changed from that time to today? Uh, it's hard for me to say because because before I follow, yeah, right. but now no, no. I, I don't watch films. Even I mean not only Thai but other films. Right. 
and I sometimes I sometimes watch short film mm. yeah by younger filmmakers and I think that these are more interesting because I think it's kind of selfish because I look at this short film and I found myself in there and say like, oh this is really exciting and this guy is trying to find something and say like, oh and it inspired me mm-hmm. and, and that's more of the reason so I didn't look at Penek or others mm-hmm. uh, who who making uh, this feature thing film but at the same time we feel even though we don't really communicate but we feel this sense of mm, comradeship yeah. in this climate of filmmaking that harder and harder to to make film mm-hmm. in the country mm-hmm. uh, especially for distribution right yeah and mm. yeah uh, uh, you you mentioned the difficulties of film in your country i wanted to sort of move into the political situation in your country sort of yes, um, yes. since the uh, coup d'etat uh, in 2014 mm. so how your film your last film uh, cemetery of splendor so sort of daily and symbolically reflects a little bit about uh, i reckon about the military situation in your country and i was wondering sort of like film on the i think th- the next film you're going to make is in a, it's abroad mm. so i reckon um, being that the last the most recent films that you the most recent film that you've made in your country how has filming culture and you know this society changed since the military came there mm. we became more we become more obedient right and it's almost like a conspiracy that the government work with social media and to make people really used to being suppressed to the point that you are you not complain or you just complain among your own yeah, bubble your own kinship your own yeah. Kinship. yeah so i think it's a bit dangerous right yeah do you feel do you feel a sense of fear within the political situation how i mean there's been political uh, opponents that have been arrested and that kind of violent mm. situation do you feel fear of presenting a I feel more sad. sad. Uh, fear, yes, is really real threat. Real threat for people and families uh, who are not agree with the dictator. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, is for me sadness come from this submission and which I'm part of. Right. And um, the the agreement and the uh, how you say. The feeling that everything is okay when when y- there's no protest on the street and it's better to not talk mm-hmm. um, and the the idea of peace is when you agree with everything in it's like uniform mm. and that's sad that's that's right. uh, dangerous for the future too yeah right um, but I think that's why I feel really suffocated and disgust by myself. Right. Uh, so I think that's why I, I try to go away furthest, and that's Colombian, that's Colombian. <laughs> reason. Right. Yes. So to, to be for a while, maybe two, three years, and how see mm-hmm. how it goes. And mm-hmm. but at the same time, I'm still making short film and installations in Thailand, in Thailand. where I build a studio and try right. to try to be more engaged. Yeah, in different forms. You've you've mentioned uh, Colombia, um, mm. the the film that you're gonna make, which is called Memoria. Mm. Um, it's very interesting. I think um, when you look at the work of, say, filmmakers from South Korea, or from Japan, or from uh, s- some places which are not in the West, mm. their trajectory tends to be they make very pe- very popular films in their home countries, and then mm. when they get a little bit of success, they move to the United States or they move to France. And they and yeah. they make these big budget films. Yeah. Your move dif- differently from this kind of trend. I'm thinking, for instance, of Park Chan Wook, who who went to make uh, a American film since then, and he's a great director, anyways. Um, in you, you you seem to resemble more Abbas Kiarostami, um, or uh, who um, when he was sort of being uh, threatened in, in in Iran by by his films, he moved to Japan, for instance, to mm. to try to make some of his films. And um, I also want to ask you in relation to Colombia, what was it that interested you of that country? Mm. And um, in what way do you, do, you, um, do you see any sort of connection, bridges between Thailand, the landscape of your country and the landscape of Colombia? Mm. What is sort of the element that, the, that you see there? Or what are you 
looking for in, in Colombia? At first, it was quite superficial, the way that I choose you know, Latin America, because basically I, I feel that the culture is very vibrant mm. and not stable. It feels like home in a way when you were there. And I was attracted to the Amazon. I never been, but it was like tropical malady and right. this little yours, you know, the, these films were inspired by by jungle novel, Thai Thai writers. But the Thai writers themselves they were inspired by this Amazon adventure in the sixties, seventies, right. you know, by this Western writer who romanticized the jungle, you know, or colonial time time. So so I say, Oh, maybe we go I go to the source of this inspiration. Mm. Which is Amazon, but when I was there in Colombia, I was found that I'm not so hot about Amazon. I was oh more yeah. into <laughs> the city, and right. I, I love Bogota and the people, mm. and and I feel that a, a lot of link to to my work is about memory. Yeah, and instead of my own memory, in this new film, I try to absorb. I talk with a lot of that, so I act like more like a sponge you know, to, right. to have people's story about the time of violence. And mm. But it's not a political film. It's, it's more the impression of always an outsider looking in and experience this unexplainable attraction and at the same time uh, uh, doubt yeah, about oneself. So, so this film is, is me in right. a way. I mean, I'm going to ask you, Sof, a question that I think uh, you're going to uh, shake up and flap off. But Sof, mm. in your films, you've been, I mean, you've, you, you just said already that um, you sort of don't watch that many contemporary films, or you don't follow that many contemporary films from Thailand, at least. And um, I was sort of asking you, I uh, want to ask you a little bit about um, media. Right. Uh, your mm. fi media has been very important in your films since, I mean, since the beginning. Ivan Pussy, for instance, is sort of like, a, like an homage of uh, media in, like, uh, particularly like seventies melodrama, action films, musicals, and so on. And um, and uh, I was wondering, sort of like from what I gather, um, 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 I mean, sort of I wanted to ask you. you you've always been inter very interested in the, in the media. Mm. There's, there's this sort of new renaissance of TV series all over the, all over the world, and yeah, um, yeah. they've been the American TV series have managed to colonize every single uh, cultural sphere. And I gather that, for instance, Netflix is arrived in Thailand in the same way that it's arrived here in Spain. Mm. And I'm sure that people is that hooked there mm. to, to that kind of film narrative as they are here. How do you, how do you see this like, sort of ca almost quasi invasion of uh, TV series within the cultural spheres of different countries? Do you have any interest in it? Do you have a certain antagonistic relation to it? No, no. Uh, it's just more choices. and. Uh, I think it's like digital. It comes with that the the, the flow of distribution has changed with the technology, and it's bound to happen. So there's no use to resist. But I just do my own way. You know, I just know what kind of work I I like to do. Mm. So what can I say? You know, right. I, I I feel I feel great that we're living here. We just feel that. I mean, content with, with, with what's available and, and the, the choice of filmmaking, you know, the different format. I don't know. I, I, I tend to be very, very accepting. <laughs> very accepting about <laughs> yes. this practice. Uh, also, I also ha like Netflix to, yeah. to see some very smart show. You know, like I used to really love when I was younger, the special effect, still now, you know, how for a few seconds you have hundreds of people working on this frame yeah, by frame yeah. and that's beautiful yeah. you know, this creation and the same with Netflix it's, it's more of this creation of brainstorming and all these writers coming mm. in and and somehow more or less it affects uh, all this evolution of cinema right yeah okay but yeah, I do my own thing obviously yeah. uh, ju ju just sort of talk about maybe perhaps um, since we haven't touched that much the artistic influences in your work or your uh, artistic interests, Marcel Luchamp, Andy Warhol. Um. Yes, yes, so they're artists. <laughs> 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 they're, I think it's 
maybe you, when you see the duality in my work, it's, it's, it's the same thing as uh, how you view the world, you know, with, with suddenly you can shift the perspective in, in the work and I think Andy Warhol is the same and and it's, it's about simplicity and looking at sometimes mundane objects or mundane activities but make it uh, aware, make the audience aware of, of this beauty of simply observing hmm. yeah. and I think that's marvelous hmm. and uh, along those lines how you, you were saying now, uh, talking about the champ, how uh, by presenting it in a, in a gallery, they approach the artistic object in a different manner. In which way do you think people in, in this gallery are going to approach in a different manner your, your film video, as opposed to how it can... I mean, you were saying earlier that they are more uh, active um, mm. when they're in an in a art gallery. What do you mean by that? Meaning that there's a lot of information that are not there, that or, s or sometimes is quite abstract, that but but this one is different. I it's hard to say. This show is really warm. I think it's really semi cinema right. because it's all diary uh, or writing. Um, but in general, I just had a show in Portugal mm -hmm. when I put many pieces from different time together and and a few more abstract. In that way, the audience can really explore without knowing. But but just to see this light, this color, and to bring their own experience into it, to interpret. So that's what I mean, active. Where in cinema, you, you just sit and don't, you know, right. be played by the director. You're more led in the, in the cinema. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Very yeah, well, I think uh, we're going to keep it there. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. Thanks a lot for the interview. And that's all. You Coach. know a lot about my work. Say what? You yeah. made a lot of studies. No, 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 man. It was, it was, uh, it was uh, a day of honest work. But uh, that was that was it. I, I probably didn't educate enough. I must say, I did I did an essay in in, in college about tropical maladies. Ah, I see. Yeah, okay. yeah. I did I did an essay in college about. I mean, I studied in King's College. Yeah. The reason I brought up all these questions about the Oriental gaze and all this stuff is because I was sort of taught that kind of you, you know in the in the Anglo-Saxon world they have this kind of very um, very so they have a guild. They, no, they have a, yeah, they have yeah, this, this imperial guild, <laughs> guild of course, <laughs> and, um, and uh, in some way in Spain it hasn't arrived yet, but it, it'll get there. <laughs> <laughs>